Today we're going to learn a little bit about iteration or doing something more than once and we're going to do that by looking at something called a for loop. So I'm going to put the basic structure of a for loop here in a minute but I'm just going to start writing hello so we have a good sense of where our program starts. And then we're going to create a for loop and we're going to get it to go through a list of numbers. So I'm just going to write some numbers here. And then every time through this loop it's going to print the number is and then whatever the number is as it goes through the loop. Oh, I missed a colon here. So the structure of the for loop, uh, you set up a variable that changes every time through the loop and it goes through a list of things. So our list is 271 and so and then we'll just print goodbye at the end. This will just help us see where it starts and ends. I'm going to push play and you can see hello the number is 2, the number is 7, the number is 1, goodbye. So the for loop executes one time for every item that's in our for list. Okay I'm just going to copy this code here, paste it down here and let's just experiment with some differences. So I'm going to change the numbers I'm going to put a negative number, a positive number, a bigger number, and we'll run it again. Push play. And now we have the number is negative 2, the number is 3, the number is 10. So you can see it's just going through each number in this list and printing them out one at a time. And so there are three elements in that list, and therefore it executes three times. Let's do another one. So we've got 0 through 6 this time, and I push play, and you can see it prints out each one. So that means the loop runs 7 times. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 0 counting as the first iteration through the loop. So for every element that we add to a list and ask our for loop to go through each one, it will go through each of those elements. So if there are seven elements in a list, it goes seven times. If there's ten, it goes ten times. You can also create for loops based on other uh, data types other than a list. For example, you can create a for loop on a string. When I push play, oops, silly me. I did that wrong. There we go. Forgot the brackets. Push that and you can see that it iterates through every character in the string and prints out H, then I, then exclamation point. So these are some examples of strings, or sorry, of for loops of iterating through a list of things or iterating through each character in a string. But there are better ways and more common ways of creating for loops and I'm going to show you them in just a minute. So there is a data type called range. Um, so if I create something, uh, a range, and give it the number 5, it's not going to print anything out. So let's get it to print that out so we can see what it looks like. Push play and we can see range starts at 0 and stops at number 5 or before number 5. That's what this means. Let's put it into a list so we can see what it looks like as a list. Push play and it puts each element of those in a list. So it's a way of creating a list of a certain length. So we can use this, especially what is often quite common for a for loop is you're going and executing something a number of times. So if I wanted to do something five times, I could create a range of five. So I can set up this ahead of time. I could say x equals range, let's say three. It means it's a range of three, so it'll be zero, then one, then two. Let's print x. So I've created a variable and set it to a range. So you can see that, and then finally, I can print list x and we'll see again it'll be 0, 1, 2. 
I can create other types of ranges that don't just start at zero. So as an example, let me just copy, actually print list range. I can have it start at five and stop before number 10. See what that looks like. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it starts at five and stops before 10. There's one example. A range could also start at a negative number. So this one should start at negative three and stop before number four. Negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. So this range is a data type that is very handy for iterating through numbers and is especially helpful for for loops. Let's just look at one last example. We can actually give the range function three arguments. So I'm going to put 4, 20, and 2. The first mean the same thing as they do up here. So it's going to start at number 4, stop before it gets to number 20. And let's see what this last number does. I'll push play. And we can see we get 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. It's stopping before it gets to 20. But we'll notice it's going and counting up by 2. So this lets it know um, we're counting by 2. So if I change that to 3, we'd see 4, 7, 10, 13, 16, 19. So again, stopping before the number 20. I'll just change it back to number 2 for now. Okay, so that's the range data type. We're going to use that in a for loop. So often the iterator variable in a for loop is the letter i. It doesn't have to be. You can see I used x and c in the past, so it doesn't really matter. But often you'll see a for loop uh, starting with uh, the iterator variable being i. So we can say for i in range 5. So we're giving it a list or a range that starts at 0 and goes and stops before the number of 5 and will therefore execute 5 times. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's just confirm that by having it print out i. Push play. Invalid. I forgot my colon. I did that before. So remember, colon. And then just like the for loop, you'll notice anything that the for loop executes is indented. So I could actually put two things here. Notice it says uh, 4. The number is 4. So you can see it started at 0 and goes up to 4. So that's what 4i in range 5 does. That's the most common way that you'll see a for loop set up is where it uses i as the iterator and it uses the range function to tell the for loop the number of times that it is going to execute. In this case, it executes five times, but remembering it starts with the number zero, not the number one, which means it stops at the number four. So sometimes before a for loop executes, we might execute it based on another variable. So let's set this up in a simple way. Let's say we can create a variable called times, which tells us the number of times the for loop will execute. So I can say for i in range times. Instead of putting a specific number, this number might change as you go. And therefore, it executes a number of times. And we can say print i. And we'll run it. And we can see it runs from 0 through 9. But let's say we want to do something interesting here. Let's say we want to remember what the previous value was in our for loop. So instead of just printing out the number, we want to remember the previous value. So let's create a variable here um, called last i. And we'll set it to i. So the first time this runs, last i doesn't equal anything at all. So let's. Uh, Let's create another variable out here, and we'll call it last i also, and we'll make it 0. So the first time this runs, it's going to equal 0. 
So instead of printing out just I, let's say, um, let's make it print out itself plus the previous iteration of I. So it'll add the previous number to this number. Let's run that, see what it looks like. We see zero. So the first time through, we get 0 plus 0. So last I equals 0 and I equals 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. The next time through, last I gets the value of 0. So, but this time I equals 1. 0 plus last I. So 1 plus 0. Let's make this print out so it's a little easier to see. So print I plus it's a string, so it's in quotes. Last i equals, in quotes again, and then we'll do the math. i plus last i. So we can see the math as it happens. So here we go. First time through the loop, we have 0 plus 0 is 0. Then we have 1 plus 0 is 1. So here we can see our i iterating from 0 through 9 because we were having it run 10 times. And every time this number starts at 0, but then it gets the value of the previous value of i. So 1, then 2, the previous value, 3, the previous value. And actually, this function seems to be spitting out odd numbers. So that's interesting. We could run it 100 times. Push play. Boom. And we can see what happens again, giving us all the odd numbers. If we were to run this to a thousand, would it still only give us odd numbers? Ten thousand? You can experiment and find out. I'm going to bring it back down to ten. So that is an example of a for loop that runs a certain number of times based on an external vari variable and where we're keeping track of the previous iterator to do something interesting with it. So we can also do things other than just printing out the number that is being iterated or the last number. We might have it um, do something else. So here's an example of something repetitive. The song Happy Birthday goes, Happy Birthday to you, Happy Birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear so-and-so. Happy birthday to you. Let's write a for loop to do that for us. Imagine how meaningful it could be for a friend for you to write a for loop for their birthday. So here we go. I'm going to say for i in range, and let's think about happy birthday. I think it has four uh, repeti repetitive verses. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to so-and-so. Happy birthday to you. So the first second and fourth verse are all the same. So we're going to use conditions like we learned in our previous lesson to do something interesting and create our happy birthday song. So we're going to say if i is has the value of the number 2. So the first time through this loop it's going to be 0. Happy birthday to you. Then it's going to be 1. Happy birthday to you. Then it's going to be 2. Happy birthday, dear so-and-so. And then the fourth time, happy birthday to you. So, so if i equals 2, that means it's the third time through our loop, we're going to say you gets the value of dear, let's say Jennifer. It's Jennifer's birthday, perhaps, whoever Jennifer happens to be. Otherwise, else, u gets the value of to you. And finally, let's print something out. We'll print out, happy birthday, and our variable we set up called u, where u will either be dear Jennifer or to you. Let's run it and see what happens. Oh, I made an error. I forgot the colon. That seems to be my error of choice. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Drew Jennifer. 
Happy birthday to you. Look at that. Spreading joy. All right. Lastly, let's iterate through a different type of list. Let's say we wanted to print the seasons in the order they appear. I could create a list of seasons. Spell them right, I guess. Spring. Oh, I still spelled that wrong. Spring. Summer. Fall. And winter. Let's say we needed to print those out for i in range. There are four items here. But interestingly, we could do this. We learned about a function called length, len. Let's give it seasons. So basically, it's giving us the length of the list. So our loop will run for as many items that we have in our text list by using that function. And print seasons i. And you know what? Let's have it print out our iterator too. Let's run this loop. And here we can see 0, spring. 1, summer. 2, fall. And 3, winter. So our iterator, each time through the loop, is a different number. It's running a range that is the same length as the number of elements in our list of seasons. And then every time through the loop, it's printing out the number of the iterator, as well as the element in our seasons list that is at the index given by i, the iterator. So that's basically how for loops work.